Good morning, Newgate, United Methodist Church. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. What a wonderful day to celebrate our, uh, our freedom in this country and to celebrate all those who helped to grant that and make that possible as many of you have served in the military and our hearts are grateful for your service and for those who uh, have uh, come before you and those who will come after you. Uh, most importantly, on this Lord's Day, on this Sabbath day, we give God praise for the freedom from sin and death found in the beauty, the grace and mercy that God has blessed us with in his son named Jesus, who is the Christ. And as we begin to celebrate our not only our physical freedom, but our spiritual freedom from the from the bonds of of Satan and hell, we give God thanks and, and celebration on this day. Uh, as we begin, I want to uh, lift up a couple of announcements and uh, reminders. Um, we are asking that all class leaders uh, would apply for the church-wide pastoral care visits in the office. Um, every Tuesday through Thursday, Tuesday through Friday, excuse me, there's a noonday prayer uh, here at the church uh, please feel free to come and to pray from 11 to noon. The Board of Trustees uh, will, a meeting will be held in the conference room on the second floor of the main sanctuary after the third service at 1230. Please, if you are a trustee, please be present. Uh, we need all members uh, to attend. Our youth student, Sarah Oxidine um, graduated from high school and will be attending uh, university. We want to say special congratulations to her and to her family to who make this possible. We know that God uh, is going to do some great things in her life as she uh, matures into uh, young adulthood. We're looking for Sunday school, uh, Sunday school ministry pastor, a choir conductor, a piano accompanist, uh, an administrative secretary, an interpreter for the third service, and a volunteer uh, of the broadcasting room for the second service. Uh, if you feel so led to uh, lend your gifts to these ministries and these areas of service in Christ church, here at Newgate, uh, please uh, contact the church office so that we can get the ball rolling on that. Uh, we're accepting offering, uh, tithes and offering uh, via uh, physical mail and PayPal. Um, and so we want to extend that opportunity for, for those of you in here and also those of you who are watching online this day. Uh, please pray for all uh, of those who are suffering uh, from COVID-19 here in the United States and then uh, those abroad as well. Uh, pray for those members who are among the illness and who are suffering in, in other ways, in various uh, uh, ways. I uh, want to pray for uh, Mr. Kaiser and Mr. Thompson, Miss Ojeda and uh, uh, Sucha Detweiler. Uh, we uh, want to make sure that we are continuing in prayer for them. For I don't know about you, but prayer changes things. When we pray, it moves the heart of God, uh, and God hears us. For the scriptures tell us um, that, um, uh, that when we pray, when we call on the Lord, he hears us and he answers. And so we give God praise for that. I want to say thank you to Ms. Kaufman for the altar flowers and for uh, the commitment to help to beautify this, uh, this uh, sanctuary on this day uh, of our worship towards heaven. As we continue in worship and we lift up our hearts and our voices uh, in, in praise, uh, I want to ask if you'll rise to your feet and join us in this great hymn of the church, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
Please be seated in the sight of God and in the presence of each other. I'm so grateful to be here today and to stand behind what preachers call this holy desk, the opportunity to, to share a word from the Lord on this day. Um, I count it a, a blessing and a privilege every time I can stand up here and to share uh, a word that I feel that God has given me, God has touched uh, my spirit with, my heart with, and I pray um, that as I share this message today that, uh, that God touches your heart and your spirit as well as you seek to, uh, to, to be a better Christian, a better follower, a better believer um, in, in Jesus Christ. Um, for our sharing uh, on this day as we... Um, look at this message. I want to lift up just one verse uh, from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, uh, verse 19. Hear these words. And all, the cr all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him, and he healed all of them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for this day, for your grace and your mercy, your loving kindness, for waking us up and uh, starting us off on this brand new day, for giving us new mercies uh, on this day. We give you thanks and praise, God, for the opportunity to make it to this place, to, to wake up and have the energy and the zeal uh, and determination to come here. We give you praise, oh God, because we, some of us really wanted to stay in the bed today uh, as it's raining outside and just kind of uh, drear, God. We just, we really could have just stayed in the bed, but we are so grateful that your spirit woke us up and encouraged us and inspired us to make us, to make our way down to uh, the house of prayer. And so God, this day, as we have gathered in this space to share in prayers and scripture and song and in the preached word and in holy communion we pray that the power of your holy spirit would resonate in us in our hearts and touch us oh god may we feel and experience and know we have been with the lord on this day god there are so many things in this world that would seek to distract us and to keep us from being who you've called us to be and to do the things that you have called us to do, to say the things that you have called us to say, God, to, to be countercultural, God, and to have standards and, and, and a sense of morality and righteousness about us, God. But we can do none of that without your help. And so, God, we pray this day that you would attune our hearts and our minds to your spirit, to your will, to your way, that we might look more like Jesus when we leave than when we came in today. Help us, O oh God, to have the heart and the mind of Christ, to love everyone, even our neighbors. God, we say thank you for all of those who have served in various, numerous ways to, to ensure uh, that we uh, have been granted freedom and liberty to live uh, our lives in the purpose that you have blessed us with. And we celebrate them today. 
And we also thank you for what you have done in Jesus Christ, securing our freedom, uh, the freedom of our souls uh, to, 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 to cherish and to inherit the kingdom of God. I pray, God, that although we have a taste of freedom here, there are many all across this world who are entrapped by their governments, entrapped by sin, entrapped, God, by oppression and depression. And God, we lift up our brothers and sisters to you who want freedom but have not found it, who want who wants a way out but have not acquired it. God, we lift them to you. And we pray that they might find freedom in your name. That they might find freedom in their struggle and in their work for liberty. Thank you again, oh God, for this day. And I thank you for my brothers and sisters who are gathered here today who have come that we might worship you together in the beauty of your holiness. I pray, oh God, that if there is any sickness among us, God, that through the power of your Holy Spirit, you would touch them and heal them. I, I thank you, oh God, and pray that if there is anyone who is who, who is depressed, God, and who, who feels down and out this day amongst us in our community, God, that you would touch them that you would touch their hearts and their minds, God, that they might be encouraged and inspired and motivated by your great love. God, we need you today. We need you right now. And so we invite you in because we know that you don't always force yourself on people. And so God, we invite you in and say, come into our hearts and in our minds and transform us, touch us, fill us, mold us, make us through your power. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, happy 4th of July. Uh, on this day in which we celebrate all of our freedoms and uh, I'm sure most most of us all in here understand that although we celebrate freedom that the cost of freedom is not free um, that there are those who uh, who have given their lives their sanity uh, their families and their comfort away uh, to ensure uh, that there are those of us who who share in the freedoms that we do uh, and to protect our liberties. And so we give God thanks and praise for all of those uh, today. Uh, I just want to read the scripture again from Luke chapter 6, 19 says, And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Uh, for a short time today, for your hearing and our sharing in this moment of uh, of proclamation of God's word, this preached word, um, I want to lift up uh, the title, Touch, 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 Touch. I, I, I remember uh, when, when the first iPhone came out um, and uh, all of my friends were mesmerized uh, of course, I couldn't buy one because I was a, a young college student and it cost too much. <laughs> uh, I, it, it, was, it was a small thing, broad and in some ways clunky in comparison to, to the phones we have now, bulky also, uh, yet it was appealing and new and fresh to the eye. It, it could do so many amazing things that, uh, that, that most phones during that day could not do. It was a game changer that then I remember when the first iPhone came out and, and it was a touch screen. 
Now, it wasn't the first uh, touchscreen phone, but it was one that was uh, in, in some contemporary way um, masterfully made uh, that in ways in which you could touch uh, with, with, with the touch of a finger could change the screen and move things. It was revolutionary and popular and as I consider uh, that phone, that first iPhone, and 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 the first phones that uh, and the touch fo- touchscreen phones that we have now, um, I can see the big difference. As a matter of fact, I, I couldn't afford uh, the first iPhone, but what I did was I bought. Um, uh, the, the Chinese version, it was called the Psy phone. And uh, I know, I know, I know. And uh, it, it did all of the same things that the iPhone, but it was not an iPhone. It was, it was really weird. I just kind of bought it just to really see, you know, how cool the iPhone was. Uh, and I remember that day. I remember those days. And I remember we've come a long way from the original iPhone. Now, um, and yet one thing that has not changed is that uh, the touch feature on the phone. Uh, as a matter of fact, there I don't know if you can, does anybody know if you can get a phone that's not touch screen? I'm not sure. Maybe at Walmart or somewhere. I think I've, I've seen someone with a flip phone, uh, maybe a track phone or something like that. You know, uh, but, but it's hard to find those nowadays as a matter of fact if you were to go and, and, and get a new uh computer many computers now the uh the uh, the monitor is touch screen and man we've we've come a long way with these things touch screen has has lasted and as as I was thinking about this and, and, and consideration of the sermon uh, topic today, I thought we as human beings need touch. We, we need to, 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 to have the ability to touch or to be touch we we long for the opportunity to touch something or someone else uh, so much so that when when this whole covid thing broke out not only were were people beginning to wear masks but it it was not uncommon to see people wearing gloves because we we touch so much and I, uh, in my reflection time i thought man I, how many things I have to touch just to live, just to make the day go by. Just how many things we, we have to touch. Ha- having the ability to touch or be touched is an essential part of our development, our nurture, our understanding, and our growth. And in, in my brief stay as, as a child protective uh social worker, I, I attended uh, one of the trainings, and in, in the training, uh, they talked about uh, uh, neglect. That's one of, the, one of the red flags or indicators that uh, a family might need assistance or help uh, from the state is if a child is being neglected. And I, I, I ran across um, in that training, uh, the, the study that they did, uh, a short study of children, young children, um, in which who were being touched and who weren't being touched. As a matter of fact, they uh, they they uh, they they shared that this was actually a, a, a horrific thing that they did um, uh, in Nazi Germany uh, with Jewish babies. That, uh, in, in particularly, also in Latvia, where uh, there were orphanages where babies had not been touched up until they were five years old. And they looked at the statistics of how that baby responded to people, how that child, that young five-year-old responded to people, and the difference of those who had been touched all of their lives. And they noticed that that baby, that child that had not been touched in five long years uh, had some developmental issues going on in their heads and in their bodies. And infants uh, are neglected if, and if they don't have human interaction and touch, 
of an adult, it will impair and hinder their growth and development into adolescence, into, uh, into their youth ages, their young adult ages. We need touch and, and we need to be able to touch. We don't hear uh, much uh, uh, about uh, one's inability to touch too often. Even our brothers and sisters who, who are deaf and blind use their touch to guide their decisions. If you've ever seen the movie Ray, uh, where, where Jamie Foxx uh, plays the role of, of, of Ray Charles Robinson, uh, there's a scene there in which, um, and there's a few scenes in which the, the camera zooms in on, on, on Ray Charles meeting women. Uh, time and time again, he, he meets different women. And the way he can tell whether he's going to like the woman is the way that her hand feels in his hand. We need touch. We, we need touch. That's why, gentlemen, uh, when you're walking in the grocery store uh, with your wife, she, she reaches over gently to grab your hand. We need touch to, to, to understand intimacy, to, to understand connectedness, to, to understand love, and to understand um, uh, relationship. We need and long touch. Many of you uh, uh, remember the touch of those you loved most in life growing up. We, we remember the touch of our mothers and fathers who, who helped to bathe us, who changed our diapers, who hugged us and embraced us, who squeezed us and, and combed our hair and sometimes pulled our ear or thumped us on the head or sometimes uh, spanked us. We, we remember the touch of, of fathers who guided our hands in labor, who, who showed us how to change a tire, who shook our hands with those strong, hard hands as a sign of greeting. If, if you were blessed enough, uh, you might even remember his hug or his kiss. We need touch. We crave touch. This is why uh, one, of, one of the most difficult things in, as we experienced COVID was not to be able to touch. This was one of the greatest and, and hardest things was to be in isolation, not being able to, to touch in, in such a way uh, that many people during this past year and a half uh, have dealt with depression like never before. Isolation is a, an undeniable key to failure loneliness and depression and I spend much time and, and we all should pray for people uh, who, who, who are isolated who have been isolated and who are isolated because of COVID and, and other uh, circumstances we need human interaction and we need to be able to touch things and each other. And in this scripture today, we, we read a snippet of a larger picture where Jesus is preaching uh, what, his, what we call the Sermon on the Mount. And, uh, and, and we see this small part of the story of a woman and many others who, who touched Jesus and their lives were changed. In, in, in other gospels, they, they highlight this woman who, uh, who, who needed to touch Jesus. Um, a time in which she had a, what they call an issue of blood going on in her body. They say that she was hemorrhaging because she is, uh, and because she is the, the, the star, she gets highlighted. And we talk about her a lot. Um, but in this chapter, in this sixth chapter of Luke, uh, I want us to look at not just this woman who might have been healed or who was healed, um, but, but also um, look at everyone else that we might have missed in previous times reading the scripture before. 
There were others who, who received a particular blessing because they touched Jesus. And there are a couple of distinct variables that must be applied and understood for us to, 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 uh, to, to reap the benefits of, of, of understanding how important touch is and was for these people. Notice that first of all, they had to get close enough to touch Jesus. Uh, many of us don't, don't want to let anyone get close to us. One, one of the things I've learned in uh, living in this uh, military uh, community uh, is that many soldiers, uh, because uh, they are deployed and they, uh, they move from place to place, don't like to get close to other people because they know what it's like to separate after building strong relationships. Many of us don't, don't let others get close to, to the vest. But, but when we read this scripture, if, if we're going to be healed like these people who gathered, we must be willing to get close to Jesus. See, our reach is, is, is only so far. We have to move in a direction of getting closer to Jesus. These, these people could, uh, could, could, could be healed because they were close to Jesus. Proximity matters. Distance matters. In, 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 in my few years of pastoring and preaching, I've learned that many folks don't want to get close to the Lord uh, because they feel that they're not ready. They're not worthy. And sometimes they're just not sure. Uh, sometimes folks don't want to get close to Jesus because of the standard, the high standards and accountability that's associated with our faith. But what I have also learned is that if life abuses you enough, you will find a way to get close to Jesus. And what I'm proposing today is that we not wait for uh, the circumstances, the difficulties and challenges of life to push us close to Jesus, but that we would make a remarkable um, and, cons and, and considerate and intentional uh, decision to move closer to Jesus in our faith. Many of the male mentors in my life, uh, I found out this over the years, they don't like to go to the doctor. My dad, my my. Uh, my dad's okay now, but my brother, I have an older brother, he's five years old. He does not like going to the doctor. I mean, the only time he'll go to the doctor if he, if he feels like maybe he's about to pass out or to die. I mean, he just, he will not go to the doctor. And I learned in listening to their conversations, they don't like being poked and prodded and pricked. But I've also found out in these last few years as they have grown up and, you know, I, I think once you get past, once you get to 50 and that one procedure is required of you as a man, uh, then you kind of just, you, you kind of open yourself up to it. I mean, at that point. Um, what I found out in conversations with these men is, is that there have been some gut-wrenching diagnoses in their lives that have caused them to have to go to the doctor and listen to what the doctor has to say. What, what, we're, what we're dealing with in our society is, is the battle of sin against holiness. And some of us are, are better uh, at it than others 
But when sin overwhelms us, we often move closer in our relationship with Jesus. But sometimes what we really need is to stay close to Jesus. And I say sometimes, really all of the time, what we need to do is stay close to Jesus so that we can have that steady, enduring relationship. A few years ago, one of my mentors was diagnosed with stage four cancer. And there were a few folks, uh, even since his death, that have also just been diagnosed with stage four cancer. What, what I've learned is that those folks didn't go to the doctor often. And I'm not saying this is everyone's case, every story is different. but. We should not wait until life pushes us to the point where we feel we can't do it by ourselves to realize that we can't do it by ourselves, that we need help. This, I don't know about you, but this is why I come to church. It's, it's because, and this is why I preach and why I have given my life to the gospel message. Because I recognize the beauty of having a relationship with Jesus Christ. That even in the most difficult times of life, that I can face them with courage and with faithfulness and with love and compassion. Because Jesus is present. In other words, because I am close to Jesus. And wherever you are on that spectrum of, of, of spiritual sickness, uh, when life hits you hard enough, we all will find a way to get closer to Jesus. And these people uh, in, in the text were able to be healed of diseases and cured of any ailment that they had because they got close to Jesus. Staying close is half the battle in the fight over sinfulness and the hardships of life. James chapter 4 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. If we want to receive power from on high, we must draw near to God. Secondly, what I notice in the text is that they were focused on what Jesus was saying. I think in our world, we can be distracted by so many uh, different things that we, uh, we can't see the truth of who God is in our lives uh, that we, and we get discouraged and depressed and out of sorts. So not only were they close to Jesus, but they were intently listening and hearing what Jesus was saying. They were focused. On Jesus. Notice the progression here. To get close and to be focused on Jesus. To get close to Jesus and to be focused on Jesus. To, to be close to Jesus and to be focused on Jesus. You can be close and not be focused. I, I've been, I don't know if you've been watching them. Um, um, the, uh, the, 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 the NBA, uh, uh, playoff season. Um, uh, but, um, there've been times where the, the center or the, the, the tallest person on the court, or what they call also the position is number five. Um, they're in the paint and the person, what we call the point guard is, is running down the court, dribbling the ball, looking to see who they can pass the ball to. And, and, and the center will be down in the paint uh, and, and the point guard will pass the ball to the center and the center not be paying attention and the ball hit them or they steal the ball or it goes out of bounds. You can be in the game and not be focused. 
You can be at church and, and not be focused. You, you can have faith even and not be focused. These folks who, 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 who were close to Jesus were also focused on Jesus. Many people get close but lose focus while in the presence of God. Getting, getting close to Jesus, getting close is just the first step. Being intentional about our focus is key in our healing, our spiritual growth and relationship with God. Some people don't, don't mind coming to church and, and they think they've done what they're supposed to do and, and taken care of their obligations. But the scriptures remind us that even the devil got close to Jesus. Notice how Judas was one of the disciples and he was close to Jesus, even at the, the, the last supper, the Lord's table, uh, Holy Communion on that night, Judas was there. He was close, but he was not focused on the mission that Jesus had set forth for his disciples. Yes, getting close to Jesus is good, but being focused, paying attention and doing what Jesus teaches is another level of devotion to God. You remember when, when Moses encountered the burning bush in the book of Exodus. At some point in that conversation with the burning bush at the beginning, God told Moses not to come any closer. And he told him to take your sandals off because you are on holy ground. And then from there, Moses proceeded to receive instruction for what he was to do. See, closeness gets you to the point to receive what God has for you. Before God gives you instruction, commandment, healing, direction, or guidance. And we too must understand that yes, we can get only so close to God before we have to heed the instruction and commandments that God has laid before us. Lastly, we learned that everyone who was close and focused on what Jesus said was healed of diseases and cured from unclean spirits. Jesus wanted then to heal everyone and Jesus wants now even for us to be healed and made whole. This is why the disciple John in the third chapter and the 16th verse of his book says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes will not perish but have everlasting life. God has come to take away the sins of the world past, present, and future. And this scripture reminds us that they all were healed. Every last one of them that needed a healing, that had a disease, uh, that, that had an unclean spirit, were healed and cured. You might be in need of a healing today. You might be uh, in need of, of being cured from an unclean spirit. Maybe it's depression. Maybe it's suicidal thoughts. Maybe uh, it's uh, inadequacy or insecurity. Whatever the spirit is, God offers healing and a cure today. 
You might be in need like I am of a miracle. And if we all can stay close to God and follow and focus on the word that Jesus says, we will be healed, set free and delivered. For Jesus said in Matthew 21, um, truly I say to you, if you have faith, that means if you uh, have a focused belief and not doubt, you will not only do what has been done um, to the fig tree, but even if you say to the mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, it will happen. Uh, Philippians 4, 6, 7 says, Do not be anxious for anything, but everything by prayer and supplication. Let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guide, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, Without Faith, it is impossible to please God. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Matthew 4 says, And he went throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom healing every kind of disease and every affliction among the people. James chapter 5 says, If anyone among you is sick, let them call for the elders of the church and let them pray over them, anointing them, touching them with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer of a focused belief, the prayer of faith will save the one who who is sick and the Lord will raise him up and if he has committed any sins he will be forgiven uh, or like we used to sing growing up oh it is Jesus yes it is Jesus is Jesus in my soul for I have touched the him of his garment and his blood has made me whole. Thank God for the touch of Jesus. Thank God for the touch of spirituality in our lives. Thank God for how he touches us. He molds us. He protects us. He provides for us. And the wonderful ways he shows his love towards us. Would you let Jesus touch your life today by getting close to him and staying focused on what he says in his word? Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for your touch. For there is no touch like your touch. And we thank you for your touch for how you have touched our lives with so much grace and so much mercy so much love and compassion and forgiveness and we are forever grateful help us oh God to reciprocate that touch with others in our world and in our lives that they might see you in our compassion and glorify you for the great things that you have done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Will you join me in, in sharing and saying this and praying this prayer that Jesus taught his disciples in uh, Matthew chapter 6, the Lord's Prayer. And it says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We thank God for 
his touch. And not only his touch uh, today, but we honor the way in which he shared and touched all of those in the scripture who were changed by the life and the work of Jesus Christ. And as we honor and as we celebrate Jesus, we come and gather here to worship God on this first Sunday in July. Man, it's July already. <laughs> this first Sunday in July. And thank God of, for how he has touched our lives individually. And I'll just share if you ask if you will join us in this time of Holy Communion. For this time is for everyone. Jesus died and rose for everyone. Even Judas. Get this. Some people won't take communion because they don't feel like they're right on the inside or not. They're not in a good place. Jesus knew what Judas was going to do and still gave him communion. And I would just like to think that none of us in here has done anything worse than what Judas did. And if Judas can still have communion, then so can you and I. Will you join us in the great Thanksgiving? Uh, I'm going to read the white words, and, and uh, we can share together in the yellow words, okay? All right. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us uh, in your image and Breathe into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor and proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who were oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He touched and healed the sick. With his hands he touched and fed the hungry and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat for this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I always wondered why my grandmother made us, this is not a part of the ritual, but I always wondered why my grandmother made us drink after we ate. Anybody else experienced that? Like she wouldn't let us drink while we were eating. I think, I'm, I don't know, I think this might have something to do with it. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup and gave it 
uh, thanks to you and gave it to the disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you remember me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving and as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out, O oh God, your Holy Spirit on us gathered here in these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we might be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood, by your spirit. Make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forevermore. Amen. Would you do me a favor and peel that top clear layer off of your, your cup and let us share today. Grab that piece of bread in your hand and just hold it up. Just as surely as you touch this bread, the love of God touches us today. And it is in that love we remember what Christ has done for us. Take and eat this bread. Giving thanks to God and in your hearts and minds of the wondrous grace of our God. The scriptures tell us that after the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, grabbed that cup, Peel it back. Be careful. Don't, don't spill it on your pretty dress or your pretty white shirt. <laughs> Hold that cup up and it's kind of like a toast. We're, we're giving a toast to Jesus. Thank you, God, for what you've done in Jesus Christ. Thank you for the blood that was shed for our soul salvation. Take and drink. Feasting on it in your hearts and in your minds. Giving thanks and praise to God for all God has done in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for these, this holy mystery in which you have given yourself for us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Amen. If you didn't get the opportunity to, to give your tithes and offerings today, um, don't worry. Uh, there's an offering box and the offering tray will be back on the table for us to be able to do that. As we share in this time of offering and giving God thanks and praise uh, for all of these gifts, uh, let's hear these words to this song, He Touched Me.
Be seated just yet. Um, we want to pray for this offering. God, we thank you for these gifts uh, that your people have given to bless the ministry here, that people might see your goodness and glorify you. Bless each gift of tithe and offering that is given today and this week, that it might continue to be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom, that people might know that they have been touched by Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, we want to uh, just make a brief announcement. Many of you already know, uh, but if you don't know um, that uh, a couple of weeks ago, the, the bishop of our annual conference and the cabinet uh, asked me to to go and to serve at two churches in Waco, two churches. And, um, and as you also know that when the bishop calls and the cabinet calls and asks you to go, uh, you say yes. Um, many of you soldiers understand when the, when the army tells you that, you know, they need you in, in Korea or they need you in Germany, <laughs> what do you do? You tell them, no, no, you go. And so um, I, I'm going to, to Waco to Pastor uh, Wesley United Methodist Church and St. James United Methodist Church. It's a two-point charge. Um, in, the old, in the old tradition, we say a circuit rider. Um, and so I just am so grateful for my time here at, Saint, uh, at Newgate, uh, but beginning with St. Luke. And so I, I give God praise for how you have blessed me in conversation and with gifts and with smiles and so much wisdom. And I uh, just know that I am uh, continuing to be in prayer for you and just ask that you would be in prayer for my family and myself as, uh, as we begin this new uh, journey and adventure and ministry and service in the, the city of Waco. My wife uh, will be moving as well uh, from her church going to One Fellowship United Methodist Church in Waco. So please, uh, please keep us in your prayers as, as we uh, serve God in this way, as is our commitment and our devotion uh, to the ministry. And as we share in closing today, uh, I thought it only right that we sing this hymn together, uh, His Eye is on the Sparrow. Please remain standing and let us lift up our hearts and our voices in this song. Should my heart 
My favorite shows is Star Trek. I don't know if you have any Trekkies in here, uh, but I love Star Trek. And uh, one of the particular species on Star Trek, they're called the Borg. And what they do is they go and uh, they they assimilate other folks, and they 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 make others see the freedom of of their life and how they live and the blessing of of of, of their way of living. As we leave this place, uh, uh, and I know this is probably a bad comparison because the Borg are considered kind of the villains in there. Uh, but, but as we leave this place, but never from the presence of God, um, go and share. Go and touch somebody's life in the same way that our Lord Jesus Christ has touched our lives. Go share God's love, God's grace, God's peace, God's forgiveness with everyone you meet. Name of the Father, name of the Son, and name of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. And all God's people said together, Amen. Amen. Amen.